Jumpy one here on stained glass cuts. I made a video a while back called How to Make Large Stained Glass Rings C's and O's that utilized a new approach. Since then, I've been using this method to make quite a few large rings, and as a result, I have some improvements to share. But first, as I've just had my third anniversary with YouTube, I want to thank you for watching. Your likes, comments, and ideas keep me rolling. And now, large rings 2.0. In my initial video on ring cutting, I scored my two circles and created a break all the way around both, removed the outer piece, and took the remaining circle to my lapidary trim saw and made four cuts, which then allowed the pieces in the middle to easily be removed. Worked great. If you paid careful attention to how close you made your cuts to the inner edge of the ring, Connie Ryman, a viewer, commented, and I quote, Enjoyed your video. I'm now a fused glass person, but I also do lapidary work, so this is so great. I think you should also include somewhere how the circular saw cuts more on the bottom side than the top, so newbies aren't surprised by this. Connie was spot on, and it's not just newbies. I ran into this too. So what are we talking about here? The pink lines here represent the glass and are three millimeters wide, and the lapidary trim saw blade is six inches in diameter. If you look at the glass, you can see that the bottom portion of the cut is ahead of the top portion of the cut, by as much as six millimeters or two thicknesses of glass. So if you saw all the way to the inside edge of your ring or O as viewed from the top, which can happen very quickly, you can end up cutting into your ring on the bottom side. Not good. Even if you're making a very large hole and can get the saw blade further into the glass, you'll still have about a three millimeter undercut. So the lesson here is to stop short of the inside of your ring or O when cutting. Thanks, Connie. Or by drilling the three millimeter holes, the undercutting portion of the saw blade breaks into the hole before it makes contact with the inner edge of our ring or O. It does not have to be a three millimeter hole, it can be anything larger. Some of the pieces often fall out while sewing. Problem solved. But here's another solution. One that not only solves the undercutting problem, but may make it possible for some of you to start cutting large rings, C's and O's. A great comment from Richard Flanagan. He comments, Nice video, thanks. I guess you could use a ring saw with a separating blade for the inner circle, but that would take much longer than the lapidary blade. Here's why this is a great idea. You may not have a lapidary trim saw, but do you have a ring saw with a separating blade? The major advantage to this approach is the elimination of undercutting issues. And I'm pretty sure you wouldn't get as wet as I do. Slight drawbacks, you'll need to drill a hole to feed your blade through, but only one, and the cutting would be slower, but that gives you more control. Thanks, Richard. And another comment from Keith Burnett. There's an easier way. Take a diamond head drill bit, say five millimeter diameter, sometimes used for drilling a hole in ceramic tile, drill four holes on the inner ring being careful that the holes don't overlap the score line, then score across between the holes so you have four quarters and carefully break out. The beauty of Keith's method is you don't need a saw of any kind. 
You just need to be able to drill holes in glass. I was successful in using his method. I made a larger ring, so drilled eight three millimeter holes. I did have some difficulty breaking the pieces free from the middle, but I may have missed something in Keith's technique. Thanks, Keith. And here's how the pieces fell out, and here's our ring. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. Cheers. Cheers.